Now, social media is an everyday part of our lives today, and when you think about it, targeting is supposed to be about advertising and profit. Fact is, we choose to join, and since it's free, there has to be a revenue source. Look at Facebook, Twitter, and the other platforms and what they're really doing. They are playing the big money game much in the same way that corporations have for decades. Are the mea culpas in front of the U.S. Congress or any other governing body uh, part of doing business even if there's a cost or fine included? I want you to think about that. Time for a reality check on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and all the others. We should first look beyond the ideology that some will claim is the primary reason and go to the financial profit motive. That said, there are legitimate questions about biases in the social media space. Truth is, it's a largely liberal world in political thought, and that now violates a once strongly held liberal view that welcomed all ideas for debate. Free and open to all is also a potential pathway for criminal and for terrorist organizations. And while law enforcement agencies worldwide more easily target illegal actions, what about terrorist organizations? This is where it gets more complex, especially across national borders and legal systems. See, this is not about free speech the way we see it here in America or in principle around the world. This challenge is about fighting terrorism online. There are threats on multiple levels to individuals, ethnic and religious groups, and yes, even nations. Facebook, Twitter, other social media platforms have both a responsibility and they have potential liabilities. Often these platforms hide behind terms of service. These are written by lawyers in such a manner that cannot easily be deciphered. Honestly, really. How many of you have read the terms of service? A difficult question is, how do you hold these social media platforms accountable? Are they legally responsible for policing against terror? Are they effective as they claim to be in doing so? Remember, this has to happen across multiple jurisdictions and across multiple sovereign borders. Joining me now to discuss President of Sharat Hadin, the Israel Law Center, Nitsana Darshan Leitner. Nitsana, just great to have you on the show from our Jerusalem Bureau. And this is a very important topic. Hi, David. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So let's talk about taking on terrorism online. And as you heard me just say, it's free. We join individuals, good people social media, it's a part of our world today, but it also opens the door for terrorist organizations to use it. So terrorist organizations that are using social media, Facebook, Twitter, and others, effectively now, who are they? Actually, every terror organization is using the social media platforms. Um, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, PLO, Hezbollah, ISIS, Boko Haram, every terror organization is using Facebook, is using Twitter, is using YouTube. You yourself know, we all are familiar with the beheading videos of ISIS, um, which were screened only on the social media, only on YouTube. We all know the uh, uh, Hezbollah campaign to raise funds, which is not done on a, a, on a bank or um, or by mail, or uh, by approaching people on the street, only on the social media. So the social media platform became an essential tool in the work of the terror organization, something that they never had before and cannot do without. Um, I can just give you an example of uh, Hamas. Hamas sits in Gaza. The uh, hardcore Hamas is uh, some bunch of terrorists controlling Gaza Strip. When they want to carry out attacks against Israelis, they cannot leave the Strip. They cannot leave Gaza. So they have to use other terrorists in today in some area in the West Bank. They cannot approach them. They cannot come to them as they used to. Um, let's say uh, maybe five, six years ago, they were able to leave the Gaza Strip. 
and go. Today they are behind fence, so they cannot approach people from Judea and Samaria. They cannot give them weapon, they cannot train them, they cannot teach them what to do. The only way to contact these people on the other side of the fence is by social media. So we have so a communication media, aspect to this, and that's what you're talking about. Uh, what about engaging new potential terrorists, recruitment, using, uh, using social media in all its forms? That's, that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. When Hamas posts inciting posts to come and join it, uh, to come and kill Israelis, to come and stab Jews, this is how they get the people from the strip outraged and, and angry to come and carry out attacks. This is one of the tactics. The other tactics is really to communicate with them. Um, I can give you an example of, um, uh, of the uh, Hamas TV channel, uh, the one that just was outlawed yesterday by the uh, Prime Minister of the State of Israel. Let's say Hamas in Gaza want to recruit someone from the West Bank. He goes, and that's what happened in real time. He went to them. Um, Somebody made a call, the guy answered the phone, he said, how do I know I speak to a Hamas militant from Gaza? Give me a proof. He said, don't worry. Give me a phrase from the Quran. Tell me any phrase you want. And tomorrow morning, watch Al-Aqsa TV, Hamas formal TV, and the broadcaster will repeat this phrase. Then you will know that you're talking to real Hamas. And this is how they communicate. Um, another instance was, if you watch All Access TV, you will see the uh, uh, MC moving his cup from the right side to the left side. You'll know it's Hamas. So they this use a second, a uh, to way use it to uh, lightly, they use a second form of verification through their other media. Uh, as far as what they put on social media, uh, videos, you mentioned before some of the things we've seen, the horrible things we've seen on social media, but are they using this regularly? Are they putting up videos? Are they putting up uh, training videos? A and what platforms specifically? We're talking Facebook, Twitter. Name some of these platforms and some of these instances. Yeah, right. So the most popular social media network among the Palestinians is Facebook. And on Facebook, you can either post posts or videos, and they use them both. They uh, put videos, for instance, illustrating how to kill. Uh, general videos using um, the sort of knife that it's preferable. How to push the knife, how to twist the knife, what poison to put on the knife before you go and kill, where to ambush the Jew, how to recognize it and distinguish it between other people, uh, diagram of human body where to slaughter the Jew. These are all posts that teaching and training and telling you how to kill Jews. But and what then about the speed go, of which Facebook recognizes, since we're using Facebook as this example, uh, if you're posting a video, and I think about other social media posts that usually catch people's attention, this isn't the dark web. This is Facebook, open to all. What about the speed at which Facebook responds? And what about their liability and their responsibility legally? This is a huge problem because as we see that all this incitement to kill Israelis and kill Jews are taking place in Facebook, Prime Minister Netanyahu in recent years urged his ministers to go and meet with officials of Facebook and ask them to turn this incitement down. But Facebook refused. What was Facebook their reason for refusing are, to do so? They said they are only a bulletin board. They are not involved with the content. They are not involved with their users. And they are not taking a side in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Well, if they're not responsible, it seems to violate their community terms. We often hear that term used for just about every social media. Uh, the terms of use. The, the content, you know, you don't put up child pornography, you don't put up certain other forms. Uh, they seem very right. harsh, very quick to get to that at times. But are you saying that when it comes to terrorists teaching people how to kill, Facebook is not responding or not responding Absolutely. fast enough? 
Absolutely. So what's they the legal care. recourse? Um, so, so Facebook, Facebook has uh, immunity uh, to their claim according to the Communication Decency Act. This is a law from 1996 that Congress legislated in order to keep the internet open, and it grants blanket immunity for social media platforms, including Facebook, uh, from content. They are not considered to be a publisher, a server, or a social media network don't have responsibility for content that users are posting on their page. So when you come to them and say, take this post off, they can have a discretion whether to do it or not. And I can tell you that you touch upon a very important point. Um, when they want to get involved, they do, and they take a side in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, in order to prove that, we open two pages on Facebook and tell you a very short story two identical pages, one page called to kill Palestinians, the other page called to kill Israelis. And we posted identical posts with identical images, just with one difference, one's against Palestinians, the other against Israelis. And after two days, we asked Facebook to take down both pages. Facebook immediately took down the page they called to kill Palestinians. They sent us a fair message saying that they checked the page and it does not fit their community standards. But they left the Israeli page standing. They sent us a message saying that they checked the page and it does not violate their community standards. So where is the next step here, Nitsana? You, you've obviously worked from the legal aspect of this, taking them on, and I see here uh, that along with your goal of stopping terror funding, which is what Shirat Hadin does, uh, you are in the process of a $1 billion case against Facebook. You're also suing, suing uh, Twitter. So let's talk about that aspect of it, legal recourse. Uh, often in the American courts, you have to demonstrate harm to have standing in court. Uh, right. Where are you doing this from? Are you doing this in the United States, from an Israeli court? How are you proceeding? So watching all this, the stubbornness of Facebook not to take down any incitement post and refusing to take responsibility, we took them to court. We did it on behalf of five families of American citizens that lost their loved ones in stabbing attacks in recent years in Israel. And we filed a $1 billion lawsuit against Facebook in New York in the federal court. Um, this case is going. Uh, in addition to the case against Facebook, we filed lawsuits against Twitter, against Google, who owns YouTube, uh, on behalf of ISIS victims. Because as we said before, ISIS cannot do without these social media platforms. And these all cases are taking place in the federal courts in New York and in San Francisco going on. I want to believe that these cases will go all the way to the Supreme Court, um, either by us or by them, because these are unprecedented cases. These are cases that the uh, district court, perhaps the Court of Appeal, or perhaps the Supreme Court will have to rule for the first time in the United States whether social media networks are immune from aiding and abetting terrorism. Our allegation is that by providing a platform for the designated organization, the social media networks violate the Anti-Terrorism Act that prohibits any American company to provide any sort of services to a designated organization. So when Facebook allows Hamas or ISIS or any other designated organization to open a page and to recruit militants on this page and to raise funds on this page and to send out their propaganda and their ideology, they violate the Anti-Terrorism Act. And the Communication Decency Act does not govern in this instance. Two Has there laws. been a the response from Facebook on the technological front that shows or demonstrates in any way that they have taken any action and in this case, something they could point to and say, look, we tried to do this, we do our best to do this from a technological standpoint, because they will obviously have to work their way through the lawsuit at their defense. Yeah, okay, fine. So they have billions of dollars in profit. They can assign 100 people, 200 people, whatever it takes, build a task force to deal with this incitement. Indeed, you cannot screen it and words will come up. 
absolutely but you have the tools you have the algorithm you are able to monitor these deadly words and take them down it may not be done by computers it may be done by human being because you have to feel the content and you have to see the context of these words but eventually if you put your resources into it you can take it down Facebook comes and say here I did that I did that it's not enough it's a drop in the pocket I'm telling you there are tens of thousands of posts in every given day calling to kill Israelis and illustrating how to kill so Facebook not by legislation not but outside source not by compelling but from its inside has to change its policy they did it in Germany I can tell you David that they had a case in Germany where they built a task force of 200 people going and monitoring incitement against Muslim extremists, against um, uh, incitement to uh, against Muslims. They can do it if they want. Did they, they do that because of pressure from the government in Germany? And okay, I, I, fine. I apologize, it's a so quick here. question, but was there a was there a governmental entity involved in Germany? And would the Israeli government take action? Since primarily we're talking about terrorism against Jews worldwide, yes, but focusing on Israel as well. No, the Israeli government is not taking. Uh, legal steps they will indict obviously the terrorists but they cannot go and uh, uh, they are not going to go and indict uh, Facebook uh, Facebook has a major office in Israel uh, but it's not in charge of the content and the Israeli government even by legislation is not passing any laws to restrain Facebook um, they trying to negotiate with Facebook efforts that did not succeed and I believe that in the end, only these legal cases will bring Facebook to acknowledge that they are, that they have social responsibility, and these cases will find them accountable. Nitsana, thanks. Thank you again for joining me from our Jerusalem Bureau. Great talking to you. Important subject. We'll follow the lawsuit. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, David. Thank you very much. Reality check and common sense right here. Social media has a responsibility. The companies have a responsibility, but they also have potential liabilities. And while I'm not a fan of government, again, free space, private companies getting involved, we have to find that line. I don't know what will happen in the end, but they will have to walk it. We bring it to you every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Fox Nation at 2 p.m. You can also join me on Radio Daily. You get that on Sirius XM Patriot, Read Me in the Hill. And on Twitter, I'm pretty active there. Always use the hashtag, reality check.